Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. India has reached the 38th spot on the World Bank's Logistic Performance Index this week. In 2014, India was ranked 54th. It climbed 16 places from 2014 to 2022. Prime Minister Narendra Modi termed it as an encouraging trend. Powered by government's reforms and focus on improving logistic infrastructure. In a tweet, he said, these gains will reduce costs and make country's business more competitive. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar called on President of Guyana, Irfan Ali, this week. He also met his counterpart from St. Luica, Alba Baptiste, in Guyana and said he appreciated his insight at the India CARICOM Ministerial Caribbean Community held in Guyana. Jayashankar reached Guyana for a three-day visit to this country this week. Saudi Arabia has evacuated Indians and citizens of 11 countries from the violence hit Sudan. Saudi Arabia said it evacuated a total of 66 citizens of 12 friendly nations, including that of Pakistan, Bangladesh, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Canada. It comes days after Minister of External Affairs S. Jay Shankar spoke with Saudi Arabia's Foreign Minister about the evacuations of Indians from Sudan. Defence Research and Development Organisation DRDO and Indian Navy have successfully conducted a maiden flight trial of a sea-based endo-atmospheric interceptor missile off the coast of Odisha in Bay of Bengal. The purpose of the trial was to engage and neutralize a hostile ballistic missile threat, thereby elevating India into the elite club of nations having naval BMD capabilities. Russia is switching to national currencies in energy trade with foreign partners. Russian Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak said in an interview with the Russian One television channel. According to the official, in the future, Moscow intends to abandon the euro and US dollar in energy exports altogether. Most transactions are already done in Chinese yuan and Russian rubles, he added. A team of people from NASA and the Ohio State University have developed a new 3D printed alloy GRX-810 that can be used in aeroplanes and spacecrafts. It has the potential to dramatically improve the strength and toughness of the components and parts used in aviation and space exploration. It is twice as strong as the current state-of-the-art 3D printed super alloys. India is in talks with Russia to inaugurate the Chennai Vladivostok Maritime Corridor to boost maritime ties between the two countries, Union Minister Sarbananda Sonowal said on Sunday. This corridor will serve this purpose, acting as a conduit of growth and investment cooperation between the two historic cities with rich marine history, Chennai and Vladivostok of the two countries, he added. India and China held the 18th round of core commander level talks on Sunday at Chushul, Moldo meeting point to resolve matters in eastern Ladakh. The last round of talks happened in December 2022. India's side was led by Fire and Fury Corps Commander Lieutenant General Rashim Bali, while an equivalent officer represented in the Chinese side as per the ANI reports. Tata Sons Chairman Ratan Tata has been awarded the Order of Russia's Honor, the highest civil honor in the country. Ratan Tata is a titan of business, industry and philanthropy, not just in India, but his contributions have also made significant impact in Australia. Barry O. Farrell AO Australian High Commission to India tweeted.
Pakistani journalist Hamid Mir and Naseem Zehra have revealed that former Pakistan Army Chief General Kamir Javed Bajwa told the group of reporters that Pakistan Army is no match for Indian Army. Mir and Zehra also said that Bajwa told them Pakistan's aircraft and tanks are not fit and there is no diesel for the movement of the troops. It indeed is a big revelation. India is planning to connect its power grid with the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia via undersea cables to boost domestic energy security. Minister of Power R.K. Singh said, Cabinet notes about the plans have been circulated and bids will be invited once detailed reports are developed. India is also in talks with Singapore regarding a similar plan, he added. Yuan became the most widely used currency for the cross-border transactions in China in March. It has beaten the US dollar in the category for the first time, Reuters reported, citing official data. It is said, cross-border payments and the receipts in Yuan rose to a record $549.9 billion from $434.5 billion in February. It was used in 48.4% of all cross-border transactions. The batches of Indians from the crisis-stricken Sudan kept arriving in Mumbai this week under Operation Kaveri. Indian aircraft C-17 brought back Indians to Mumbai from Jeddah. The rescue operations has been named Kaveri to establish a metaphorical significance. River Kaveri is one of the largest rivers in India that flows through the southern states of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. This river is considered sacred by the people of the region and is worshipped as Goddess Kaveriyamma. Therefore, this operation is named Operation Kaveri to establish the significance that rivers reach their destination despite the barriers they go through. Here, River Kaveri is portrayed as a mother who will ensure that she brings her children back home safely. USA and South Korea announce Washington Declaration to lock in nuclear deterrent. Washington has agreed to periodically deploy United States nuclear armed submarines to South Korea and involve Seoul in its nuclear planning operations. In return, South Korea has agreed to not develop its own nuclear weapons. China, clearly not pleased with the United States stance, warned against deliberately stirring up tensions provoking confrontation and playing up threats. Kerala Forest Department remained unsuccessful on the first day of Mission Arikomban, an operation launched to capture rogue elephant Arikomban. The elephant earned the name as it used to raid ration shops for rice or ari. Seven teams which included veterinary doctors and darting experts set out to capture the animal were unable to locate it. And now for the segment where we see the events that unfolded this week back in history. 23rd April 1993, voting for Eritrea's independence. On this day in 1993, after a long history of foreign rule and decades of war, the small East African country of Eritrea began three days of voting on a referendum to make official its independence from Ethiopia. Twenty fourth April two thousand and five installation of Pope Benedict sixteen. On this day in two thousand and five, Pope Benedict sixteen, successor to John Paul II, formally assumed his position as the new leader of the Roman Catholic Church during a mass in St. Peter's Square in Vatican City. twenty fifth April nineteen ninety, Hubble Space Telescope sent into orbit. The Hubble Space Telescope, a sophisticated optical observatory built in the United States under the supervision of NASA, was placed into operation this day in 1990 by the crew of the Space Shuttle Discovery. 26 April 1986 Chernobyl Nuclear Accident A devastating environmental catastrophe occurred this 
morning in 1986 when an explosion and fire at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere. Twenty seventh April, nineteen sixty one, independence for Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, which for years had been a British colony and protectorate, achieved independence with the British Commonwealth. Sir Milton Margai served as the first Prime Minister. Twenty seventh April, nineteen forty five, Benito Mussolini executed. Italian dictator Benito Mussolini who after a series of military misadventures became unpopular even among his fellow fascists was captured while trying to flee Italy and was executed on this day in 1945 29th April 2011 British royal wedding on this day in 2011 Prince William of Wales second in line to the british throne married his long time girlfriend catherine middleton in a lavish ceremony broadcast to millions of television viewers well that's all friends for this week's updates see you soon next sunday on the same channel till then take care bye bye